Welcome to WWDC. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a quick recap of WWDC 2021, so let's get straight into it. So, first and foremost, Apple started to talk about iOS 15 and they brought it out with new FaceTime audio features. Uh, things worth highlighting, portrait mode, sharing FaceTime links, you've also got a new grid view, it's still end-to-end -end encrypted. What's nice is you can now share those FaceTime links so folks on Android as well as on the web via Windows devices, folks can join. So they actually talked about this for quite a while, pretty cool. Apple's definitely you know, doubling down with FaceTime in a you know post-pandemic world where we're on video calls way more often. So that was FaceTime. They also, you know, didn't forget to mention end-to-end -end encrypted, privacy, all the things that we'd expect to see from Apple. After that, as soon as uh, Craig here gets finished up, they moved on over to SharePlay. So SharePlay, in my opinion, is kind of a gimmicky thing. Basically, the name implies what it is. You can share various things uh, with your friends in real time. So think audio, video, apps, screen share, things of that nature. In my mind, it's like AirPlay meets like social. So here they're uh, you know going ahead and sharing uh, you know what you can do with it. You can share across different devices. It doesn't even have to be on the same device. While maybe you're on even FaceTime. So you know that's SharePlay. There's a lot of sharing APIs, so us developers can build the stuff into our own application. So Craig talked about talked about this for a while, and then got into messages. So messages, Apple has been really doubling down on as well, trying to make it a messenger competitor on WhatsApp and whatnot. So they first talked about you know grouping photos together in these nice uh, collages, and then they got into shared with me. So the news app and photos app and other platform apps that you know you can share different types of content for have a shared with me section and that's synced across the OS so you can more easily find stuff that's shared with you so things like photos and whatnot. After that they transitioned to talk about photos specifically and the big thing here was uh, music mixes so they'll take your photos and create different uh, you know mixes kind of like stories but with, you know, audio and stuff. So pretty cool. I think it's pretty nice that Apple keeps pushing on photos, but, you know, we'll, we'll see uh, how useful it actually is. After that, they moved over to notifications, and the big thing here was a bit of a visual design tweak, larger images, and notification summary, which I think is kind of cool. So nowadays, we get a lot of notifications, and notification summary basically does what it sounds like. So it summarizes notifications that are not personal ones. There's also a concept of prioritizing notifications, so they're not necessarily chronological with different focus modes. So let's say you're in Do Not Disturb, or you specify your focus mode as working or sleeping or something like that, your notifications will be tailored to whichever mode you're in. So for example, personally, I like to turn down the noise whenever I'm working or writing code. Uh, after this, they talked about, you know, the various ways that these notifications are going to start to look and feel, uh, how other people will know, like, you know, if you're not in Do Not Disturb, just to make sure that you don't actually miss any notifications, because it is pretty important. Then they spent a little bit talking about this feature called Live Text. Basically, Live Text, we have seen this before with other apps, so you take a picture, you know, the text gets... Uh, uh, read out from the picture. You can highlight, cut, copy, paste. You can move it around. Pretty cool. It's not limited to the camera. It's also available with screenshots and photos in your photo library. I don't think it's particularly groundbreaking, but it is pretty cool and it supports a variety of languages. And, uh, you know, system-wide, it, it can be pretty useful. I think it's a good approach for Apple to start. So then they went to Spotlight. So Apple's always improving their Spotlight search. So they talked about a different, uh, a variety of different new search things that they support, uh, music, artists, things of that nature. The thing I thought was the most cool was searching for photos. So they visually, you know, basically figure out what's in the photo and you can search for it directly uh, within Spotlight search. And then here they started to talk about, you know, photos uh, even more so. This is the uh, mixes stuff that I was talking about. And then they transitioned to the uh, Apple Wallet. So Apple Wallet got a bunch of new support for things such as hotel keys and most importantly, ID cards. So here in the U.S., you can now take a picture and for participating U.S. states, bring in your ID card. They mentioned the U.S. TSA is going to start to ramp up with this so we can use this at airports. 
And then they quickly transition to a redesigned weather app, which is pretty similar to what kind of we have already. They're probably tweaking after the dark sky weather acquisition. They talked about new data, this and that. You've got some visual maps in there, etc. Then they moved over to maps and they totally ripped off Google Earth and made a Apple globe, which admittedly looks pretty cool. They added more details to maps, such as crosswalks, bike lanes, and etc. They also added this cool new uh, moonlit dark mode that you just saw there. I think it looks pretty sweet. The other thing that I thought was really cool, which we'll see if we catch it here, you can now actually, once you're out of a train station, take a picture of the area around you to get augmented reality directions. After that, they have transitioned here to talk about the transit stuff that I was just mentioning. So definitely more support for transit and where you're going. Apple has always been, you know, pushing the ante not only in just navigation with maps, but here's actually what I was talking about. You can visually scan the buildings around you when you're out of a train station, for example, because you might get a little disoriented. And here are the cities that it's going to come to first and foremost. After this, they transition to talking about AirPods. So there's this thing called conversation mode where the AirPods are going to, you know, be more, uh, you know, intentional about picking up sound, um, canceling out noise, you know, just some AirPod tweaks. Honestly, they spent a little too much time on this in my opinion, but AirPods are so uh, popular and all over the place that I'm not all too surprised. They're always pushing... Uh, you know, pushing the ante on this as well. So after this, they actually had a dedicated section for iPad OS that we're going to get to in just a moment here after they're done spieling about AirPods. I'm sure all of you have a pair. I do as well. Love my AirPods. So cool. Here we go to iPad OS. Nice to see Apple actually taking iPad as a first class citizen. So first up, they talked about widgets. There's a new large widget format for the iPad. You can also now put iPad widgets anywhere on the screen. They're not going to only be stuck in the left column now. Widgets really make your iPad come to life. They moved over here talking about this concept of a shelf. Split screen and, uh, you know, side-by-side -side apps are pretty big in uh, iPad larger screen sizes. So they definitely spent some time on that. They also talked about this new concept called Quick Notes. So we're going to get to Quick Notes in a moment here, but it's the idea where basically you can quickly take a note. Shocker, very creative name. So Quick Notes, um, not only can you just uh, do it from the Notes app, but you can do it anywhere in the system. And what I really like about this is that they're taking the Notes experience further. On the right there, you can see there's like a Notes history. And this really reminds me of apps like Notion and Things like that, right? Here's quick notes in action where you can just swipe up with your Apple Pencil and quickly jot down a note. There's actually some products that literally just do this, so it's nice that they're bringing this to iPad. Um, this is kind of cool if you have, like, you know, if you're walking around with an iPad 24-7 in hand. I can imagine, like, a lot of doctors or lawyers or people that use this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis throughout their day would really like this stuff. So let's see what else is going on here. So Craig continues to talk about iPad a little bit more. They talk about mail. They talk about, you know, some new things coming to that. We're going to get to mail and iCloud and all that goodness in just a moment. The other big thing they showed here is you can now build actual full apps on the iPad. So we always had Swift Playgrounds, but you can actually publish an app on the iPad now. And here they're talking about that mail mention I just made. So there's mail privacy as a part of the new iCloud bundle that they renamed to iCloud Plus. You now don't have uh, you know access to your IP address if you're a third party, so people don't try to track you with Apple's latest privacy push. They talk about you know some fancy technical jargon here, internet relay, probably to sound impressive, but basically privacy first. So yeah, and then here they talked about a bit of a morbid topic. So they talked about you know like if you want to recover your Apple ID password, what happens if you pass away? Well, you can now uh, specify some contacts as designated, uh, you know, recovery contacts, and you can call them to recover your uh, your stuff. So this is good if, you know, you pass away. Hopefully no one's passing away anytime soon, but it's nice to see Apple taking uh, this into consideration because, you know, it is something that we should think about now that so much of uh, our content is tied up in the Apple ecosystem. So here they're talking more about that iCloud Plus bundle private relay, hide my email, you know, pretty common stuff. Then they moved over to health, which is always interesting and impressive to see. So they talked about health sharing, which is a pretty big no-brainer, progressive step for Apple to allow to share your private health data with providers, your family members, etc. They also talked about steadiness detection to make sure you're walking correctly. You know, if you have any something, you know, unsteady in your pace, in your step, in your walk, Apple will be able to pick up on it now. 
Always nice to see Apple pushing this forward. There's some new Breathe and Mindful app improvements, specifically in watchOS 8. There weren't too, too many big updates for watchOS 8. I mean, very incremental in my opinion. They have some new portrait, you know, watch faces, which are always nice to see. Once again, incremental in my opinion, but definitely still welcomed. Not going to discount it for, you know, what we've got. So next up, they talked about the Home a little bit. So here they're talking about, you know, the HomePod. You can use it as a speaker directly with uh, your Apple TV. You can hands-free tell your HomePod to go ahead and play stuff on your Apple TV now. So really pushing the buck on your HomeOS setup. And then after this, we transition to macOS Monterey, which is the next installment of macOS. So pretty incremental as well. Craig started talking about universal control first and foremost, which is this concept of where you can just drag your like cursor to your other device, you know, universally controlling everything. So I think it's pretty cool how many people will find it useful and eh, kind of debatable. Maybe if you're a big power user of iPad and Mac, you'll love it, but definitely not, you know, the star of the show. I, I think it's cool, but I don't know. It's not a reason myself personally to buy a iPad, but here they started talking about AirPlay coming to Mac, which is definitely a major welcomed addition, as well as shortcuts. You can ask Siri to run those shortcuts. We've also got a Safari redesign, which is pretty minimal. I've always liked how Safari looked. It's really nice and clean, nothing over the top, and that's how personally I think it should be. We also got web extension support for iPhone, previously only available on uh, Mac OS, and that was basically it. This is where Tim Cook wrapped it up. Betas were out as of yesterday, and this will be available in fall. So this was a quick recap. I'll be doing a ton of videos to go into detail in terms of what we've got coming up, uh, you know, on this channel. But uh, yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Like the video, subscribe, and I will see you in the future videos.